Hey everyone, the Network Berg here. In this video, we'll be looking at how to secure our wireless access connectivity by using stuff like WPA or WPA2. And we'll also be looking at how to set up a WPS access point and how to connect to the WPS as a client. So let's get into the video. All right, so let's look at how to secure our wireless networks by adding stuff like WPA onto our security profiles. So I'm just going to navigate to the wireless field and I just want to do a quick reminder of how this all interacts together because we've got our WLAN interface and if I double click on that, I can actually set a security profile and the default one is always selected, but you can create new profiles and those profiles you can associate with either this interface or you could associate it with an access list for remote clients to connect with so that they need to use the details specified in the security profile to connect. It's basically just a password that gets associated with your SSID so that users can connect. Now let's navigate to our security profiles. And in my initial video where we actually configured an access point, I already set up WPA as well just to add that security. Um, but we'll act as if we didn't. So let's just say this is the security profile by default. This is the profile that's being used by that WLAN interface. And here we can set, can it use WPA or does it use WPA2? And the PSK just stands for pre-shared key, which is just the password. You can also do something like WPA EAP. And if we go to the EAP section, you can actually add a security certificate that users need in order to connect. So this is actually quite nice to use as well if you have security certificates that you can use so that the remote device needs to have the security certificate to connect else it will fail and then you don't need to type in a password. So as long as the devices have the certificates, everything works fine. Um, but we'll just use the PSK because that's actually pretty standard and straightforward to see because a lot of people just add a password. Now, the WPA1 or just WPA, that's the initial version of this that was set up and it allows or enforces a very small uh, version of encryption so that people um, need to put in the password to connect to the SSID but it's not the most secure uh, version there is. It is still, I don't want to say easily hackable, but um, the WPA2 version actually adds more encryption on top of it so that if you use WPA2, if there is some malicious user that's trying to crack your password on the wireless system, then it will be a lot more difficult for them to do that on WPA2 than with WPA. The reason we still see WPA1 as an option is because a lot of legacy devices can only use WPA. So this is very old devices, but um, you might find that an old a piece of equipment still needs wireless access and that's why WPA is still around just so that we can provide this type of access to those devices. WPA2 is pretty standard these days to see everywhere and I believe there's a WPA3 as well um, though you won't really see that on Microtik. Now that is just in essence what WPA does. So here we can define the pre-shared key. So if I disable either of these you can see the box gets grayed out. And if I enable, then each of those boxes then allows me to fill in information. When you set a pre-shared key, it needs to be eight characters in length. So you can make it one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. But I implore you to please set a secure password. Make it something that um, isn't going to be easy to guess. So not, not something like uh, password one, two, three, because I can promise you that's something that somebody will figure out very quickly. Next, we're going to look at WPS, which is a very, I don't want to say fun protocol because it's not very secure, but it's something that you should know about as well. Okay, so WPS, we can also access that from the wireless section, but please note WPS isn't just for any device. You need to have a very specific model, so you might have to go onto the Microtech um, TOC or website just to see if the model that you have uh, allows it because if I go into the wireless interface you'll actually see there is a option for the WPS. I'm not seeing it here because I'm on the client and this is a HAP Mini and this doesn't do that. So if I go back to my actual access point uh, here we can see WPS mode. Now the WPS mode you can either have it disabled, you can have a push button which means if you like press the reset button that's like pushing the button. Um, but that would mean that the 
router board is on while you push the button or it might have a physical button called like WPS like I, I'm, I'm not sure which models you might see that on but the safest option would be this virtual push button only and what that means is you see there's a WPS accept button here if you have this mode enabled and you click on the WPS accept if a client tries to connect with WPS they'll just be able to authenticate um, I also want to mention just slightly what is what is WPS? I mean, maybe I'm jumping ahead of myself. So now you've seen how to enable it. But WPS is a very straightforward and quick way to grant access to a guest if they want to just get on the wireless network without having to put in stuff like a password. So you might see this a lot with um, think of it a lot it works as very similar to bluetooth pairing so both devices start their pairing uh, thing but in, unlike bluetooth where you need to put a code in there's no code so uh, the ap just puts on or accepts the wps connections for the next two minutes and then uh, the client just needs to say okay i'm going to connect on wps and then that's how they get onto the network very quickly so <laughs> it's just a quick and easy way to access the network if possible but i suggest against using it because it isn't very secure so use that at your own discretion i just want to show you where you could set uh, where you can configure the client on if you aren't wanting to connect uh, using wps as a client so there is a wps client button you can just click here or if you double click on your wireless interface and you see the wps client button there you can click there and then you can specify which interface do you want to run the WPS client on. You can say, just say the WLAN. And if you put your uh, this create profile, it will just create its own profile when it connects to a access point. So you can just click start. It will say connecting. And now in theory, if the WPS AP presses the WPS accept button, then the client will be able to connect. Unfortunately, I can't demonstrate that to you with my model of the Microtech because even though I'm clicking the button, um, the client doesn't want to connect and I've looked at it it's because at a base level uh, this 951 it just doesn't want to do WPS so if I if I do like a interface wireless WP so here I'm doing a, a virtual push and then it just says WPS not running but <laughs> this is in essence how you would do WPS if, if your marketing supports it this is what you can do again this is where we're going to end off the video I'd like to thank you for watching and I'll catch you in a future video bye bye